Here we go. Let's make it a good day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a brand new week. We are live from our studios in Eden Prairie. Welcome to The Jason Show. I'm Jace. It is Monday the 14th, September 14th. It's crazy. <laughs> it's the mid, it's the mid of the September. Uh, please welcome, she's back from a few days off, my sidekick sister from another mister. It's Kendall. Hello, Kendall. Hello, everyone at home. Hello, Jason. How you doing? Good. I um, spent a lot of time and money on mums this weekend. I know you said you went mum shopping. Is that a, is that a that's a plant that you buy around this time of year, right? It correct. It yeah. is. Um, and it's like one of those things that all the influencers do. So naturally, I'm like, oh, that's pretty. I want to do that. It's just kind of expensive. Yeah, I, I talked about it this morning earlier. I'm not a plant kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I kill. That's why this is fake. Everything, all the plants <laughs> you see. I don't know. We can't take a shot. There's literally two people in the studio today, but uh, and our new wall over here, all of the plants there are fake. Uh, faux sounds they're better. Faux, okay, I'm sorry, they're faux because I, my mother, when I was growing up, took care of plants mm -hmm. and was great. I kill everything. Chia Aww. pets, plastic plants, I kill everything. You yeah. killed the chia pets? Yep, I had a chia plant of uh, the Golden Girls, of uh, <laughs> Sophia, and killed it. Speaking of the Golden Girls, we have a fun little throwback coming up a little bit later. Uh, but first, let me begin with this. Um, hashtag people don't like change. Um, and I'm talking maybe to some of you. Last week, you know, we debuted a brand new look, uh, new music, the theme song, new graphics. And almost 95% of all of the stuff has been universally accepted and complimented. But there's one element of our new package, as we call it, that you, some of you, do not enjoy, and that is the background behind me. Uh, we are affectionately calling this Stripegate. <laughs> Stripegate. Uh, because uh, over the weekend, uh, executive producer Jeff and I were texting each other. We got another comment. Oh, we got another email. Oh, we got another alert. Uh, a lot of you do not like this background for a myriad of reasons. Uh, we have, uh, in different categories, we have the people that think that I don't really pop off the background because I have dark hair and I'm up against dark, uh, a darker color. Okay. Then the, the most prominent comment is that the stripes behind me are, uh, they're moving too fast and they're distracting. Uh -huh. So when I have responded to people, I have politely reminded folks that the old background, the Jason, mm -hmm. moves 80% more than this ever will. Mm -hmm. uh, we purposely slowed this down. But anyway, here is proof that we, that we listen to you and we get it. I don't want to be annoying. I don't want you to turn the channel to the screaming ladies over there on The View. You know, I don't want that. I want you here. So uh, Kimberly just emailed me. Kimberly, I refer to her all the time. She's our Yoda of graphics. Mm -hmm. She said it's going to take a few days. She's backlogged making, I don't know, something for the Vikings or Town Ball or something. <laughs> so, but until then, we're here for you. So Director Steve is in there because Leo is at a hot yoga retreat. So, Director Steve, for the time being, I'm going to snap my fingers. Here we go. Ready, Steve? There we go. Is that better for today? Is that? No, no, watch. Now, let's go back to the shot. In about two seconds, we're going to get an email. It's too purple. It's purple on purple. Too much. Anyway, so this is what we'll do. This is fine for today. Jeff, do you like this? I, I, you know what? It's fine. Yeah. It works. Yeah, Jeff is already yelling at me. It's time to start, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Here we go. Let's do this. Woo. There's no applause today. Now the, the fake applause isn't working either. First up, the wait is almost over for Dancing with the Semi-Stars. The new season featuring, did you hear? Tyra Banks is the new host. It pre premieres tonight over there on the Alphabet Network. 15 celebrities will compete this season after going into quarantine with their partners. Now, What's breaking today, other than the fact that today's the premiere, ABC has released the songs they will dance to. So here's what we know. Nelly is going to be performing one of his songs uh, to one of his songs. 
Uh, and uh, Tiger King's Carol Baskin is going to be dancing to Eye of the Tiger. Okay. Well, it's, I mean, can you get even more? Can you get any more cliche than that? And here's the good part, though. No one will be going home on week one. Uh, the first elimination will be next week. I will be watching because I am really curious of how Tyra Banks is going to do. I'm going to be curious if they've changed the format in any way. And I want to see how much Derek Huff will annoy me. <laughs> but mostly Derek Huff. Mostly watching. Mostly to I'm going to be seeing you. how much Derek Huff annoys me. But you anyway. Know, I mean, Carol Baskin. So I was reading about how they're all, you know, going to be quarantined together. We were yeah. just talking about that. I'm wondering how long it is until someone just like taps out because they just don't want to be with their partner anymore. If you were partners with Carol Baskin, how long could you sit and like quarantine with her? Well, and I was thinking about this too. It is, you've heard pros over the years talk about, it is a crapshoot. You, right. you don't know. I, I mean, you meet and then for the cameras and it's like, oh my goodness, I love you. So excited. But, but uh, you know, it's a lot of big personalities and sometimes you do not click. Right. Not, not everybody is a Kirstie Alley Max, that which was, you know, a, mm -hmm. a great combo back in the day, 2011, I think. But, um, I, that's a long time to be with somebody right. and to fake it, you know, on national right. television. Right, because exactly. I mean, they're all going to be happy go lucky for the camera, like you said, but especially now that the stars, the dancing professionals, they're kind of stars in their own right. Yes. Sometimes arguably more than uh, the stars they're paired with. So I don't know 35% of those people, but I know <laughs> all of the, I know right. all of the professionals. Right. Yeah. Like our buddy Alan Burstyn, who we will be rooting for, Gene, his brother, our buddy, mm -hmm. texts me, goes, get ready, Alan's going to go far this year. Ooh. I'm like, well, Alan goes far every year, right. so we're going to make it. Next in the dish, a new scandal for the CBS reality show Big Brother. Several all-star contestants are being called out for rude comments about another contestant who is on the autism spectrum, who is a person, is an individual with autism. The comments were caught on a live feed from the house. Ian, the man in the upper right in a green shirt, um, is, is an individual with autism and says he rocks back and forth like that uh, to calm himself down. Now, he is a former winner of the show back uh, for this all-star version. Four other contestants were caught mocking Ian and laughing about his calming mechanism. Look. Standing over there, looking at you. Rocking on the end of my bed. Oh. Like this. Like, that's going to be my nice. <laughs> so that's Memphis. Uh, Christmas, Danny, and Nicole caught talking about Ian. It, it's hard to hear, but what they're saying is it's like, uh, I'm paraphrasing because uh, it was hard to hear that. They're basically saying it would be a nightmare to wake up and find him rocking in front of the bed. Reports are they were told to stop by production, but were caught doing it again later. Many viewers are blasting them on social media with former housemate, housemates calling their actions mortifying. One of the housemates, Nicole, is paying the price for her actions. That's her right, right there. Twitter users tagged her on inst tagged all of her Instagram sponsors, and two of them, including Oil of Olay, say they are no longer going to work with her. She's one of those influencers. That's why that's what we mean by sponsors. So far, uh, the network CBS hasn't commented. Look, I always say this. I uh, I do snark here. I do snarky comments. I always try to walk a line. Sometimes I walk the hypocritical line where I get upset about something, but. I try never to do mean-spirited snark. That's why I don't do fat jokes. Um, I certainly would never do a joke about an individual on the autism spectrum. I have people in my life very close to me. One in particular that I'm thinking of that I won't, I won't embarrass. But um, when this individual gets excited, he uh, goes, he scratches behind his head, and it's a calming mechanism. I would, I would slap the crap out of somebody if I caught somebody making fun of him. You know what I mean? I would lose my, I would lose my mind. Um, you don't do that. That you don't you don't do that in 1980. You don't do it now. It's crass and it's uncalled for. Your mic is off, so we'll probably have to move on. Okay. Oh no, now oh, it's hey, back. Hey, we're on. back. We're back. There we go. Um, what I was going to say is McRae, when he came on the show, he did tell us that Ian is probably somebody you want to watch out for because he's really good at the game. Yeah. So what do they do? They make fun of him. And I wanted to pull up this tweet by Janelle, our other Minnesotan. She said instead of laughing, they should be standing up for Ian. He has a disability. So obviously people who are from here think that he's really good. Yeah. And that's why 
They're yeah, pinchers. and it's a disorder, and not uh, not that we're trying to correct Janelle, right? But we want to be. It is that was not. What she said. A, yeah, it's that's what, it's not a disability, we, but that's what she said. We want to be very clear because, girl, I try to be respectful, and, right. and, and there's there's a lot of other things you can pick you know, pick. Uh, pick pick on them. I mean, you can have jokes. Pick on the fact that they smell. You know right. what I mean? Like they live their smelly socks shower. around or whatever. But this, something that's out of their control is out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Next in the dish, the newest daytime talk show premieres today. The Drew Barrymore Show. Drew was profiled on CBS Sunday Morning yesterday. She's been a guest on talk shows since 1982. Uh, yeah, on Johnny and talked about using her experience. There she is right there to actually host a show. Listen, have you talked to David Letterman or Jimmy Fallon or, or anybody about, you know, how do you do this and what's the secret sauce? All of the above, actually. Yeah. Yes. Is there one thread of advice that they all have that's the same? They all say pace yourself. Which, of course, I and my stubbornness was like, I've been working since I was 11 months old. You don't even know my work ethic. <laughs> thing you've never been asked about. Also, Drew also talked about overcoming big issues in her life from emancipation to her parents to addiction and more. She calls herself very lucky. I, I, I was talking to Alexis earlier and I said, a lot of talk shows come and go. I don't usually pay a, a lot of attention to a lot of them. I don't know if it's because she's a contemporary because I love her uh, as Gertie. But this is a show that I'm actually really curious to watch. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is because we're connected with her because she is vulnerable and she is not perfect and she shows all of her mistakes. And I like that. I like mm -hmm. people that admit they're wrong or they admit they've stumbled and they grow from it. I like that. Right. And she, like Kelly Clarkson, like you with this show, just kind of oozes kindness and goodness and it makes you want to watch her when. There's a lot of things to be kind of sad about right yeah. now. And I think she, she's going to fill the daytime with some optimism, which is what we try to do here. And we'll continue doing that when we come back, because there's a lot more to come back right after this. <laughs> the party is just beginning. Next, ready, set, cart. The beloved game show is back. We're giving you a preview of the all-new Supermarket Sweep with new fabulous host, Leslie Jones. Then, on the road again, foodie fanny, Stephanie Hansen, will join us live from the road with tricks to creating big, delicious meals in small spaces. And we're kicking off Pizza Week. Have you ever tried a pickle pizza? Well, you will today. Well, through the TV. That's all coming up, so stay right there. On a scale from one to 10, how freaked out were you when you accidentally spilled red wine into Princess Diana's lap? 10, 10 plus 20. I thought my And she reacted was over. very well, right? She was very cool was about it, right? Very cool about it. She took a napkin, just wiped it off her skirt, and said, This is nothing. I thought that I would never be invited anywhere again. <laughs> you will, though. You will, Andre. That's former Vogue editor. Andre Leon Talley dishing about an embarrassing moment with Princess Diana on Andy Cohen's Watch What Happens Live last night. I love him. More hot dish for you now, and I'm getting some help all the way from Hollywood. Please welcome our good friend from TMZ. It's Brad. Good morning, Brad. Hey, good morning, Jason. How are you? Happy uh, Monday. Uh, happy Monday. First up, a, a new buyer for TikTok. Who is it? McDonald's? Uh, Taco Bell? Who is it? <laughs> You know, uh, you probably wouldn't have guessed this one. So Microsoft was in the running for a long time. Uh, there were serious negotiations. They have dropped out. And the new front runner is a company called Oracle, big, big tech company up in Northern California. Uh, they are allegedly now in serious talks to purchase the American portion of TikTok. I mean, the big issue here is the TikTok algorithm, uh, because a lot of people thought, OK, with this algorithm, maybe it was giving information and user data back to the Chinese government. Uh, so that's kind of the, the top item right now in these negotiations is figuring out who gets this algorithm and kind of the keys behind it. Brad, are you, don't mean to ask you, are you on TikTok, Brad? 
Jason, I'm trying to stay off of it, but every day I think someone new asked me that. I feel like I'm going to cave here pretty shortly. I, I'm on it, Brad, and I can't figure out what to do with it. But I'm I'm older <laughs> than you are, but I, I I just watch. I don't I haven't made a TikTok yet. I think I'd be yet. in the same boat. I'd be in the same boat. I'd I'd use it for for entertainment purposes, not for creation purposes. Exactly. Uh, next up, I love this. Uh, a chance for everyone to live like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. People can now rent the house from the show. How? Oh, it's so cool. So they they have their 30 year anniversary uh, this year. So uh, they've teamed up with Airbnb to rent out the home that uh, they use for the exterior shots for the show. Of course, interior was all done in a studio, but uh, they've kind of redecorated some of the home. There's a bedroom that looks like what would have been Will's. Uh, there's an incredible pool there. Uh, but the catch is they're only doing it for a few nights. I think five stays in total, uh, $30 for people to try and enter to get in. Uh, and of course, COVID precautions have to be taken. You have to prove that you're healthy. Uh, and anyone else who you stay with has to be someone you already live with. So they're doing it safely, but also a really cool opportunity for fans. That's awesome. Finally, Steve Martin, speaking of COVID, is all about mask up. What, what is he doing? Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty funny. I think a lot of celebrities have kind of liked the fact that, hey, I can go out in public now. I can wear a mask. No one knows who I am. But Steve Martin, he posted a really funny photo over the weekend. He's wearing a mask, but then he has a, a paper sign above his head that says Steve Martin with an arrow pointing to him. So it's pretty <laughs> funny. He can still he can go out and still get the, the recognition that he so craves. <laughs> hey, Brad, before we let you go, I want to ask, how is it out there? I mean, we're all thinking of you, man, with the, with the California wildfires. Uh, how's it going? You know, lucky here in Los Angeles, uh, Jason, we do have some, some bad air quality, but uh, really thinking of the people who have been affected by this uh, up north and those who have been losing homes and had to flee their homes. Uh, We'll have some bad air here for a few days, but I know that uh, they're really fighting up there. Absolutely. Brad, have a good week. Thank you so much. Thanks. You too, Jason. TMZ on TV. Check your local listings. And for more of these stories, just go to TMZ.com. Okay, I've checked in uh, on, on the social. Speaking of social media, mm -hmm. people are loving this. This is temporary. This is temporary. One, one, two women in particular, Kimberly or Whitney, never watches our show, but got to. And she likes this background. And then another woman likes the stripes, but I deleted her comment because her favorite part of the show, executive producer Jeff. So we just <gasps> had to delete her comment just, right away. Uh, I had to, uh, oh, he wants to Jeff wants show. to book her now on the show. No. <laughs> she goes, I love the stripes. And you know what my favorite part of the Jason show is? Executive producer Jeff. Well, we're going to have to delete that comment soon. <laughs> Next in the dish. Get your shopping carts ready. We're getting our first look at the reboot of the classic game show, Supermarket Sweep. The first promo is out, and it's with Leslie Jones, and I'm loving this. Take a look. On your cart. Get that. Go! Sunday, October 18th, it's a race against time. Put one minute on the clock. To grab the priciest items you can find. She's grabbing a grill. That's $300. It's the return of the classic game show where you can win a ton of dough. The team that gets the highest card total can win $100,000. Do not make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> the show premieres in October. This is one of those great marriages of concept and host mm -hmm. or concept and talent. It is, this show wasn't a giant hit when it debuted, but over the years became a cult hit and through reruns on Lifetime and now on Buzzer. Leslie Jones is the perfect person to host this show. Have you ever watched this? I have. I've watched some of the reruns back in the day, but uh, I think I'm waiting. I think I saw one person that has like the throwback look on, the yeah. 80s sort of throwback look. I'm waiting for more people to show up like that because I think it'd be even more fun, right? I want Leslie to wear a really ugly 90s sweater, you know, yeah. that because like, like the original thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love this game. I, I, I don't know if I would be good, though, because but I do love to grocery shop. I, I either you don't what? see I, you're proving my point. I think mm -hmm. the world is divided into people who really love to grocery shop and people who do not. I enjoy it. Enjoy. I get a thrill from it. But you like to cook. I don't like to cook and I loathe the grocery oh, store. Oh, I love it. I just, there's uh, just looking around all the options. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah, I love, love it. Supermarket Sweep, like I said, in October over there on ABC and Leslie Jones, I love you. Please come on the show. Next in the dish. We'll have to wait even longer 
longer to see the next Wonder Woman movie. Warner Brothers announced yesterday it's delaying the opening of Wonder Woman 1984 uh, to Christmas Day because here's the deal. It was supposed to open October 2nd. The movie comes out uh, after the, this move rather comes after the week debut of the blockbuster Tenant. Uh, directed by Christopher Nolan. It seems most people are just not ready to return to movie theaters. No, I read, um, I don't know where it was, but I read a thread on some influencers account. Mm -hmm. They are a whole bunch of movie theater employees and, and, and fans talking about as much as they love movie theaters, they are just not ready to return. Mm. And I, it was a fascinating read and it was, I, I try to avoid the comment section, but just to read everyday customers talk about their fears, I get it. Um, I'm on the fence, I, but I, I, I miss going to the movies though. I would like to go I know. if I know they have a good filtration system, you know? And you think about like, how do they clean all those chairs? That's another thing. I mean, how can you honestly do that? Well, again, I, for me, I would Lisa Renna it myself. I would come yeah. with my own handy wipes. I would yeah. do, I'm not joking. I would do exactly what I do in a plane. Mm -hmm. I would, cause Lisa Renna wipes everything down. I would Lisa Renna the everything, the cups, my Colin, you know what I mean? I'd wipe him down. <laughs> I'd wipe the handles. I would wipe everything down. Then maybe I could enjoy myself. So you think it's a good move to push it back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonder Woman, movie like Wonder, a movie like Wonder Woman should be enjoyed big and loud, as they say. Big and loud. I want it on a big screen. I want the sound loud. Mm -hmm. You know, a smaller independent movie, go ahead and release that on streaming. That's fine. But I do think you lose something with a movie like Wonder Woman if, you know, you're on a 40-inch screen. Next up, two of the biggest voices in music battle it out online last night. This was great. Look at this. The godmother of soul, Patti LaBelle, one of my favorites of all time, went hit for hit with the Empress of Soul, Gladys Knight, as part of an Instagram live show called Versus. The music series was started to entertain fans during the pandemic. The two legends even brought out their friend, Dionne Warwick, to sing, That's what friends are for. Keep smiling. Thank you. Previous battle uh, featured, Keep shining. Uh, uh, featured Brandy and Monica. Let me just tell you, I don't, uh, the, the, Patty LaBelle, you know, people ask me, who are the nice stars? Mm -hmm. Who are the, mm? Yeah, spill Pat, the tea. Uh, Patty LaBelle, one of the best. Really? Every time I interviewed her, all I want to do is marry her. That makes me so happy. I love her. I love her so much. And there's a great story talking about battles. Mm -hmm. There's a great story. And I wonder if executive producer Jeff knows this one. She, this was in the early 90s and she was on Oprah. And she was talking about this benefit that she did with Aretha, Dion, and they were uh, on the Oprah show to publicize this event. And, bat, and so during rehearsal, Patty sings. And when Patty sings, Patty sings. Like she kicks off her shoes. I mean, she talks to God when she sings. <laughs> So they did rehearsal and she went backstage and Dionne Warwick went up to her and said, Patty, could you not sing so loud? And, and Patty tells the story obviously way better. And Patty looked at uh, uh, Dionne like, what did she do? You want me to dim my light so you could shine? So Patty looked at Oprah and goes, you know what I did. And she went out there, blew the house down. Like mm -hmm. she blew it. Blew it down. Yeah, it was <laughs> I great. That. I love Patty so much. She's one of my just favorite entertainers. See, speaking of people that I love and people that are highly entertaining, still to come today, Stephanie Hansen is on the road again, and she will join us live from her van down by the river with some advice for cooking while on vacation. It doesn't have to be a van. And later, have you ever heard of Quad City style pizza? I haven't, admittedly. Kendall takes a trip to QC Pizza to find out what makes it different. It's the start, say it with me, Pizza Week, and it begins right after this. Welcome back. For most people, Excuse me, I almost coughed there. For most people, big vacation plans are on hold amid the pandemic, but more people are hitting the road for family road trips, and that includes our own res resident foodie, the co-host of The Weekly Dish, our good friend, Stephanie Hansen. She joins us live via Zoom this morning to talk about cooking on the road again. Hey, Hansen. 
Hey, here I am in Custer, South Dakota. Can you see the big buffalo? Oh, yeah, move a little bit. Oh, that, oh, that is a buffalo. Look at that, Hanson. A big buffalo. I'm standing outside the Chamber of Commerce office. Do they know you're there, it's Stephanie? Still They're not going to call the law on you, are they? Probably, because I got my big van right there, and they probably think I'm living in it because I got van life. <laughs> now this is now Steph. This is the new. Th this is the new van, right? Not to be confused with the Wonder Bread fan, uh, van, van that people saw weeks ago. That's right, because the Wonder Bread van on our second trip crapped out <laughs> in Fruta, Colorado. So we had to make the decision to abandon that van, and we traded it for this one with an 84-year-old, very lovely man and a little bit of cash. But yeah, <laughs> we've got the new van now. <laughs> okay. We traded. Can we can we go inside the van? Would you mind? Yes. Okay. Yes. No, I want to show it to you. It's so cute. And I mean, van life is a thing, you guys, especially during the pandemic. We're out here with every other retiree in America. Look at the cute little <laughs> tiles. Okay, wait, sorry. The tiles that we had made. Can you see those? Oh, you had those made? We did from pictures from our last van trip when we were in Aspen, Colorado. You're so fancy. So, okay, friends, this is the van. I don't know what you can see. I'm trying to, there's the bathroom. Is that, wait, wait, wait. That's, shower your, in there. that's the bathroom and your shower right there? Yes, and it's like a little cubby hole. Look you at can that. See. Oh, it's very fancy. Yeah. You can take a full shower, go to full bathroom. Yeah. This is our little living area. This is the refrigerator. We even have a microwave. Oh my. The bed is back here. Yeah, we, it's fancy. We don't have to show the bed, Steph. It's fine. We can. Is there an air fryer in there, Steph? <laughs> no, I don't have my Instant Pot or my slow cooker, but many people do bring them in their vans because there's lots of outlets. You can use them all. But cooking in a van, you know, you kind of got to get serious about how you're going to do it and what you're going to bring along. Here's our knives. Oh, my. Here's God. our measuring cups, our spices. Well, what, There's lots of storage up here. What have you learned? Now, you're going to you're gonna be specifically cooking in the next segment. But just generally speaking, in small spaces like that, because like you said, a lot of people are doing it, what have you learned? What are some good tips on cooking in small spaces? Less is more. So you only want to have like the things you really think you're going to need. So up here, I've got a skillet. I've got a couple of pans. I've got my coffee maker. But I only bring a couple of things on the road. Also, you want to have lots of spices because the food can all start to taste the same. So, you know, I don't make like hot dogs. Yeah, I know. So these are all my spices. Oh, my goodness. Just in case I'm going to cook a meal. So curries and I've got some chimichurris. I've got all kinds of like sauces and pestos and quick spices. To so, make, you know, basically any grilled meat taste good. Okay, so a general night, like let's say, and first of all, where are you going? Where is this road trip heading? New Mexico. Okay. Right? We have a friend that has a place in Santa Fe that needs some help, so we're on our way. Okay, so let's say, I don't know, you're, you're going through Arizona, you and Kurt pull off uh, off the side of the road, and like tonight, what are you going to make? Give me an example. If you're not cooking weenies, what are you making tonight? Okay, my husband is obsessed with meat. So we literally have like four ribeyes in the freezer because he wants meat every day. <laughs> Yesterday, we had spaghetti and meatballs. Um, the day before that, we had lasagna. And we've got curry. We've got chicken. We've got sausages. I've got all the pickled stuff I made this summer. I've got like my pickles, my sauerkraut. This is kind of what is a look at our refrigerator in terms of what we're going to be cooking while we're here. And again, tons of condiments and, you know, that is great stuff. Let's just Because you know, like this is aspirational for folks. Most people, when they're hitting the road, we're stopping at Stucky's and getting a pecan roll and some chicken fried steak. You are making homemade <laughs> lasagna. Well, and I think, okay, I brought the lasagna with me to be fair, but... I think during COVID, you know, for us, we're trying to not interact with anybody in Good South point. Dakota. I don't know if you've noticed, but apparently they're having some COVID problems. So 
we are just sticking to ourselves. We go into a grocery store with our masks on and we buy what we need, but we don't interact with anybody. We cook either in the van or we cook outside. We have a cooktop too that we bring along because sometimes you don't want to cook in the van. If it's nice out, it gets too hot. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point. We got to go. We are going to have more at the other side, but I will have to admit, Steph, okay. when you opened up that closet, I really thought your husband was going to be in that closet. I really thought that's what you put no. Kurt during. Yeah. He's hiding outside because okay. he didn't want to be on camera. It's fine. <laughs> like I said, Stephanie's sticking around after the break. What to do with leftover green tomatoes? Tomatoes are huge. Everybody's talking about them. You'll find out when life in the van continues with Stephanie Hansen. <laughs> Love those stripes. Welcome back. We're chatting with our foodie queen, Stephanie Hansen, who is on the road in her brand new van. Uh, right now, she's joining us from South Dakota on her way to New Mexico. Okay, now, Steph, I hear, and first of all, I'm seeing tomatoes everywhere on Instagram. W what, are yes. we, what are we making specifically with, with yours, or what kind of are we, are, tomatoes are we making right now? Okay, so when I was on last time, we made the tomato and butter sauce. Yeah. Notice I have a huge quart of it here that we brought with us. Of course you do. That recipe, I've had so many people from your show text me and like, oh, I did it. It was so easy. It's just onions, red tomatoes. You stew them all together. Then you add a stick of butter and then you blend it all up so that it's smooth. And it's just a really fantastic sauce. We used it for lasagna. We used it for the meatballs. It's really easy. Perfect. So what are we doing today? I hear these are green tomatoes that their growth uh, was, was, was stopped for some reason. <laughs> okay, so I'm in Ely, Minnesota is where my garden is. So they've already had frost up there three times. So our season is really short and I get so sad because I have all these tomatoes that are green and they never get red. So I make green tomato salsa. And basically what this is, it's super easy. I have a recipe that we'll share with you. But on a sheet pan, you just cut the tomatoes in half and turn them upside down. So those little butts are in the air and the flat parts on the pan. You add some onions, some garlic, some jalapeno peppers that you also put on this pan and you just broil it at like broil 500, 450, whatever your broiler is for about 10 minutes till it gets blistered on the top. Then you scoop all that action and you put it into a blender and you blend it up and you get this delicious salsa that can be used for chips. You like when we're camping, we'll put it on chicken, we'll put it on rice, anything again, when you're camping to give something a little bit of flavor, because you usually just have a protein and maybe a vegetable and a starch. You don't have a lot of flavoring. Okay. I will admit that is super easy. Hanson. Like I, that's super Very. easy. I will tell you too. I barely buy salsa ever. Sorry, salsa Lisa. Cause if I do buy it, I buy hers, but. <laughs> You know, honestly, it's real easy and it gets rid of all the green tomatoes so you don't have to feel sad. Yeah. Okay. And then if you don't want to can it, yeah. if you're scared of the whole canning thing, just put it in the freezer. No biggie. Yeah. It, it freezes beautifully, as they say in Steel Magnolias. Yes. Freezes beautifully. Yes, it freezes beautifully, Jason. Perfect. Um, Suzanne Summers, we're, before we go, now uh, we have some pictures of your vacation. I hate you. <laughs> Before, no, we're, we're looking at you in front of like a rock formation. Where is this at, Hanson? This is at the Badlands. There was a pretty, the Badlands are just like these prehistoric mountains of rocks. And all of a sudden we're walking and there's this beautiful little field of sunflowers that they have to work so hard to grow in that environment where it's just rocks, right? <laughs> so I got down and sat in them and took one of my Instagram pictures. Yeah. And then what happened, Jace? Oh, well, let's, if Director Steve stay on this photo, what she's referring to is, I want to let all of you in on a little joke. So look, take a good look at this picture. And then what I want everyone to do is Google Suzanne Summers birthday suit. Because in celebration of Suzanne Summers, like, because I looked at this picture and I went, why does this look familiar? And it looked familiar because it reminded me of Suzanne Summers. She sat naked in, a, in, in some weeds like you did while you were fully clothed. We laughed. I sent it to Steph and my and our best. Friend. We laughed because the similarities, Hanson, are there. I will tell you. Oh, except, hopefully, my face isn't so like physically altered with <laughs> fillers and whatever else she's got going on. Poor you, Suzanne, beautiful woman. You are naturally but, ladies, beautiful. Sometimes, 
Yeah. And sometimes when we age, like a little Botox is fine, but let's be careful with the fillers. You can get a little too much. The more you know, shooting star. Uh, okay. So you're leaving, you're in South Dakota and we, we got to go, but where's, where are you, where are heading, where are you heading today? Okay. Colorado will be our next destination and we'll be going to Telluride, Durango, and then off to the Southwest, Santa Fe. I'm excited. We love ya. Yeah, me too. Travel safe. Tell Kurt, thanks. Stephanie Hansen, okay, everybody. Bye, Lobster. Bye. <laughs> the recipe for Stephanie's green tomato salsa is on her website, stephaniesdish.com. And don't miss her on the weekly dish Saturdays from 9 to 11 on My Talk 1071. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. I love the stuff. Oh. the baby so soon. I understand. Wait a couple years and Medicare will pay for it. Well, we're showing this for a good reason. Well, first of all, there's never a bad day to show a Golden Girls clip. A big day in TV history, 35 years ago today, the Golden Girls made its debut on NBC. It ended up running for seven seasons and still in repeats today. And it's funny, whenever I think of the Golden Girls, it's odd. No, because I was a TV kid, I remember all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a Minnesota connection. I watched the premiere of the Golden Girls at the Mayo Clinic in 1985. Really? Yeah, my Aunt Char was getting back surgery here, and my mother and myself and my cousin Stan, we, we came up to support her. And in her room, I remember looking up and watching the premiere. I mean, I knew the TV schedule. I was such a nerd, but I knew, and I was excited to watch the show debut. Mm -hmm. So I was in the Mayo Clinic when it uh, premiered all those years ago. So yeah, Fun fact. Saturday nights, back when TV Network scheduled Saturday nights, and now they just put on Matlock reruns. <laughs> uh, welcome back, uh, I'm Jace. It's hard to find anyone who doesn't like pizza, but the Twin Cities area is home to more than just the typical slice. We're kicking off Pizza Week here on the show, highlighting a few local spots, doing things, you know, a little different. Today, Kendall visits QC Pizza in Matamidi, known for their Quad City style pizza and a specialty pie that went viral. Look. Oh, this is our elote. What is it? Elote, Mexican street corn. Oh, the elote one. I did read about this, right? Yep. What is that, corn? Corn. With what? Mayo and some oh, other spices. Oh, you're going to love it. <laughs> OK, I know you can't see my face, but just know that underneath this mask, I am smiling because I've been following PC Pizza on Instagram for quite a while now because their pizza looks so good. And I'm here with Dennis talking about his pizza. I got to know, what is Quad City Pizza like? I've heard of Detroit style, New York style, Quad City style? Quad City style pizza has been around since the 50s. It's completely different. You need all the toppings are underneath the cheese. Okay. Pizza gets cut in strips. That's right, strips, I not like squares. That. There's no sugar in the sauce. Okay, but exactly. the other thing that makes it different, unique, is there's malt in the crust. Okay. Like I've only saw so malt in beer. I've heard of malt in like a milkshake. Is yes. it that kind of malt? No, or? it's a different type of malt. So really the secret is in the crust. The secret's in the crust. Now the other thing too is unlike most doughs, you make it and they use it. With Quad City style, yeah. it takes 48 hours for the dough to proof. Oh. So the longer the dough sits, the more flavor develops. Dill pickle pizza is the world famous stuff. We have 24 million views. Wait, 24 million views on this pizza? Seriously, when was that? Uh, that was last year. Okay, there so we we're go. making the world famous uh, yes. dill pickle pizza. Right. With Dennis, the world famous dill pickle pizza maker. Right. Has anyone called you that before? No, no, okay. here we go. <laughs> to start off, is a garlic dill sauce made from scratch. And your dough is special. Yes, there's malt in the crust. But that's what makes it that quad city. Yes. Goodness. So now, it's 48 hour smoked Canadian bacon. We slice this up fresh. Basic everyday pickle? No, it's a different type of pickle. This pickle is able to withstand high heat. 
Are you making a joke or are you serious? I'm being serious. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> Not all pickles are the same, believe me. When I started making this pizza, I went through so many different kinds of pickles. What happens is you throw the pizzas in the oven, pickles come out, and the pizza was just too mushy. The pickles would just be like all shriveled up and they wouldn't be crispy still. These pickles will be crispy. How long did it take you to come up with this recipe? Like uh, to really perfect it? It took a while, believe it or not. First time I made this pizza, um, I gave it to this young girl and said, hey, what do you think? She's Try like, that. ah, it's okay. And I'm like, yeah, I need something. At the time, there was only one layer of pickles. Okay. And she looked at me and she said, well, why don't you do two layers? And I was like, oh, I didn't think of that. Let's get in here. Now okay. we're gonna throw this in. Okay, with the big spatula thingy thing? Yeah, it's on the board. Boom. That's a That's perfected it. move, too. Okay, what's this one called? Jalapeno popper. Jalapeno popper pizza. Elote. Elote, it's got uh, corn and it's got, these are crunched up hot. Flaming hot Cheetos. Flaming hot Cheetos with the special sauce, yeah? And then this is the dill pickle pizza, the world famous dill pickle pizza. And Minnesota chicken, soda, wild. chicken wild rice. My two favorites, dill pickle pizza for sure. I could eat a whole pizza of these. My other favorite though is this one, the elote. I just love corn. I love like cream corn that you eat on Thanksgiving. And that's kind of what it reminds me of. Don't look at me like that. Do you not like corn? Ladies and gentlemen, the winners. Quad City Pizza. It's all over my face. <laughs> Put my mask back on. <laughs> Look, I I will admit I'm not real adventurous when it comes to food. Everyone that knows me is going, mm-hmm. I get it from my mother. Uh, I'm kind of a, I am a pizza purist. Mm -hmm. Just like our, I, give me some cheese. Give right. me, give me some, uh, Colin's laughing because it's, I'm a cheese and sausage kind of guy. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was, it, I really liked it. I really liked that pickle pizza. If you like dill pickle wraps, um, like with the ham and the cheese, yeah. you'll like it. I'm gonna try it though. To learn more about QC Pizza, check out QC.Pizza online. And if you missed this, we'll post it on our Facebook page a little bit later. Stay right there, everyone. Go get a slice of pizza. We're gonna wrap up the show when we come back, right after this. I will try it. I wanna try it, you know. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Kicking off a brand new week. Uh, don't forget, if you missed the show, uh, a couple opportunities to rewatch. Our rebroadcast is actually moving to 12 p.m. on September 21st on Fox 9 Plus. Or, look at this, you can catch full episodes of our show on our YouTube channel. Just search for Jason Show on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button and click that bell. You'll get a notification when a new episode is uploaded. So. Take, uh, take that and hit that subscribe button. Just go click, hit it like that. We're gonna take a break, we'll be back right after this. Welcome back. Getting a lot of nice comments uh, about our story about Big Brother and the Yahoo's making fun of the contestant that's on uh, on the spectrum, an individual with autism. He rocks back and forth. Thank you. You know how I feel about those stories. It's like, mm -hmm. again, there's a lot of things you can pick on. Good natured ribbing. I, 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 you know, you can have good natured ribbing, but something like that, right. you know, you don't pick on someone about that. Right. Even be competitive about certain things, but yeah. that? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's always, you can have some fun, right. but that's just ridiculous. That's off. That's just off limits. Right. It's just, it's, and, and, I don't know. It's just, maybe I, I was raised better by the, my, by my mother who just, mm -hmm. you know, and also because I was a person that was picked on, right. you know, you, you do have a little bit, uh, a little bit more of a sensibility about those types of things. I know what it's like right. to be picked on for, you know, being gay or mm -hmm. puffy or whatever mm -hmm. as I, you know, so <laughs> puffy. What, what, <laughs> like what did you think I said? Coat. No, I, no, I had the double, I had the double barrel. I was, you know, <laughs> gay and, and a little overweight and, you know, so I was the, no, Easy I mean, target, as they say. Even if you're someone who's never been picked on, it's hard to believe if you're someone who's never been picked on. Come on. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and uh, thanks for all your comments today. I appreciate it. This is temporary, people. Don't worry. We're going to redo it. I am cracking up. I know. The energy, don't worry about this. I want you all to focus positive energy on your life. Don't worry about something as silly as a graphic. We're, we'll, we'll fix it, but this isn't permanent. Anyway, tomorrow on the show, we're talking live to the Minnesota man, becoming a, uh, becoming a viral video star with the help of this adorable, his adorable therapy dog named Ellie. Uh, how he's spreading cheer around the world. That's coming up tomorrow. I can't wait. Uh, oh, it's going to be so good. That's coming up tomorrow. Uh, don't forget, if you're watching and you're a kid that is being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody, with Stripes.